So my name's Laura, I'm the Outdoor Learning Manager at Essex Wildlife Trust and I am really pleased to be able to welcome Sarah Knight here. We are socially distanced and we're going to have a chat about outdoor learning. <laughs> Sarah is a forest school guru, she's written lots of books, the books that I always recommend on our training courses so it's great to have you here. Um, so I've been doing this job for 25 years for Essex Wildlife Trust Going into schools, we deliver forest school training throughout Essex. We deliver um, insect training days and CPD training for teachers to get learning outdoors. So I, I've invited uh, Sarah Knight here today. Sarah, can you tell us about you, please? Yes, of course. Yes, I'm Sarah Knight. And uh, many, many years ago, I was one of the people who introduced forest school into East Anglia. But if you go back even further, I, my very first writing was for Nursery World in the 1980s. I wrote eight weeks of double sprayage article about outdoor learning. So I'm now being responsible for a number of books, most of them about forest school, but not all. Some of them are about outdoor learning generally, and innumerable articles book chapters, talks, you name it, and I've been across the world talking about how passionately I feel about outdoor learning, how good it is for children. Because schools are going back and because the government has set for its guidelines to consider what learning can be done outdoors. We thought we'd get together for a chat to provide practical support and ideas and solutions to inspire leadership teams and educators to take learning outdoors. You can cover the normal curriculum very easily and I think we've got to be aware that some of our children will have been in some very strange circumstances over these last few weeks. And they may well have stresses and strains and worries and concerns that they need to work through. So there may be a need for a bit of abnormal learning as well as normal learning. There are a lot of benefits, aren't there, of there learning are. outdoors? Yes, yeah. yeah. Making and real life learning. And I love the fact that there is already evidence that Corona doesn't like ultraviolet light. So we know that taking children outside is beneficial in this set of circumstances as well because it helps prevent transmission, it helps uh, prevent people giving and catching this nasty disease. And I have this vision, I have this vision of schools that have, whether they've got uh, a playing field or whether it's a concrete area, of little groups around the perimeters of these schools, each one with their canopy, particularly in the shade, each one creating a nest of learning, somewhere where the children can explore. They can explore the maths of how to make this their area. They can explore the geography of how to create a map so that they know how to get back to their classroom if they've forgotten anything, or the toilets, or where they're going for lunch, without crossing the path of another group. Um, there's lots of geography and maths in there. There might be a timetable they need to adhere to. Uh, lots and lots of storytelling to get some lovely rich language going. All about this discussing and explaining. And all around these little groups where people can nest and feel safe and feel comfortable. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> yeah, and it's those kind of practical things, isn't it, that can give people the confidence to take learning outdoors, like timetabling it, like having cover, like having a gazebo for shade and something to, you know, enable children to go out even if it is raining. Because yeah. this has been going on, hasn't it? This has been going on for a long time and it, it's not the first time that outdoor learning has been a thing in England, is it? In the UK. No. I mean, um, you were talking when we were discussing this earlier about the fresh air schools, weren't you? Yes. yes. Where, whereabouts were they? They were, they started in Germany and then they came over, so it was um, as a result of 
the um, so as a result of tuberculosis, and in the early 20th century, um, outdoor schools were a thing. It's very different to you know, what we think of as forest school. So this isn't all about forest school. This is just about taking learning outside and sitting outside like we are, um, and you know, sitting on cushions, getting children to bring cushions in from home, everybody sitting down and having the learning lesson like, outside. Um, so by the I think it was 19, in the 1930s, there were nearly 100 um, of these fresh air schools in the UK. Mm. So, and then gradually over time, they died out. But, but they well, would the just have all their... They found the causes of uh, tuberculosis yeah, and how true. to cure it. Yeah. But they did know what they were doing, because like, so you see, it was a natural anti, um, antibacterial, anti, what's the word, steriliser. Yeah, yeah, or, that's yeah. right. And so, if you go back even earlier than that, you've got the Macmillan system to get to which, let's face it, is a sticky area of deprivation at that, since the end of the 19th century, um, discovering that the children of the urban poor were growing up with rickets, were growing up smaller than their country, than the rural poor, um, and if they took them outside, the vitamin D that they were getting from the sunshine helped prevent the rickets forming, and the children were more robust and were growing better. They were actually getting taller just by being outside, mm, which is amazing. It's brilliant. And these days we talk about the physical benefits of that kind of active learning, you know, when children are moving their bodies to learn, when they're particularly young, as they're older, you know, it's not such a uh, thing. But um, yeah, and these old style, you know, these old fashioned ways of doing it, they would just take the tables and chairs outside and have them in rows. So doing a similar thing with a cushion and a clipboard, it still works and yeah. it enables children to still do that moving. Yeah. So, so yeah, we really want to help schools to, you know, to, in any way they can in this really difficult time. Yeah, because this is not something that's going to go away. This is, we have got to develop strategies that we can adhere to, probably through the autumn term, possibly into the winter, um, that will work will work for everybody. If we start exploring and inventing and creating now while the weather's nice, we'll be robust enough to take the picture for when perhaps the weather is a little less friendly than it yeah. is at the moment. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There are some practical tips actually, it's just been released by the TES to um, to yeah to help people get outside. Little simple things like bring getting children to bring a cushion to school to sit on. Like we've both done it. We have, here <laughs> they are. Um, Getting children to bring a coat to school, you know, that kind of thing. Some hats, children do that these days anyway. But but yeah, it's just those small small things you can do. And you know, the outdoors, it's amazing. The science, the maths, the English can all be covered. I have actually, yeah, I did actually go through the whole national curriculum and um, link all the different areas of the curriculum and how it can be done outdoors. I struggled a bit with year six fractions outdoors, <laughs> but, <laughs> but the rest of it can, can be done. Yeah. So, so we want to kind of impart our enthusiasm, we want to help leadership teams to be able to infuse their staff to get learning outdoors. So, so anything we can do to help? Yeah. And it was very interesting because I read that article from the TES. It was a head teacher from Roskilde in Denmark where, as everybody's saying, oh, the Danes have gone back to school. Very important point to remember is that <coughs> the Danish children don't actually start school until the year in which they are six. So they are not struggling with school returners who are still at the stage when their idea of social Interactive, I know you might have things that use uh, obstacles or you might have ideas, and we have got things that we can sort of provide you with to support you. It would be free, we just want to help schools to take learning outside and nurseries, all education settings, so early years, 
and schools to get the learning outdoors. Oh, and I just wanted to say, Sarah did actually train me um, in <laughs> forest school. So. Way back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, you, you and other key mm. people in East Anglia, I look at all the lovely things that you're doing and I think, I did that. Absolutely. <laughs> it's all down to you. So thank you, Sarah. <laughs>